President Trump has long had a contentious relationship with the nation's intelligence community. It has been a public spat over the biggest threats to the country, including Russia, Iran, and North Korea. As William Brangham reports, the latest shakeup at the top is likely to be a departure in style as well as substance. We both recognize that this position is frequently the bearer of unpleasant news. It's been not quite two and a half years since Dan Coats' confirmation as director of national intelligence. Now he's out. President Trump announced it yesterday in a terse tweet that thanked Coates for his, quote, great service. From the outset, the former Republican senator from Indiana made clear his view of the job. My responsibility would be to provide him with the most accurate and objective and apolitical intelligence possible. But that intelligence included alarm bells about Russian interference in the 2016 election, alarms that ran afoul of the president's views. A year ago, at his Helsinki summit with Russian leader Vladimir Putin, the president balked when asked if he accepted the conclusions of his intelligence chiefs. Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. Then at a forum with NBC News' Andrea Mitchell, shortly after the summit, Coates was clearly blindsided by some breaking news. The White House has announced on Twitter that Vladimir Putin is coming to the White House in the fall. Say that again. <laughs> Vladimir Putin coming Did I to hear the... You? Yeah, that's going to be special. <laughs> This past January, at a congressional hearing, Coates differed with the president on issue after issue. For example, the North Korean nuclear arsenal, which the president had declared was no longer a threat. We currently assess that North Korea will seek to retain its WMD capabilities and is unlikely to completely give up its nuclear weapons. And the state of war against the Islamic State group. We have won against ISIS. ISIS is intent on resurging and still commands thousands of fighters in Iraq and Syria. President Trump took to Twitter again, branding the intel chiefs, quote, passive and naive, and adding, perhaps intelligence should go back to school. Now the president has picked Representative John Ratcliffe, a Republican congressman from Texas, to replace Coates. Ratcliffe has already shown himself a full-throated defender of the president. The Mueller report was not written by Bob Mueller, and that a lot of the findings and conclusions that were in there were written by a bunch of lawyers that didn't like Donald Trump. Last week, the congressman grilled the former special counsel in person at a House hearing. You wrote 180 pages, 180 pages about decisions that weren't reached, about potential crimes that weren't charged or decided. And respectfully, respectfully, by doing that, you managed to violate every principle and the most sacred of traditions about prosecutors not offering extra prosecutorial analysis about potential crimes that aren't charged. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer okay. warned Sunday that Ratcliffe's confirmation would be a big Thank mistake. He said the nominee was selected because he exhibited blind loyalty to President Trump with his demagogic questioning. There's no word yet on when the Senate will hold confirmation hearings for Ratcliffe. On that issue, Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Richard Burr said in a statement that he would work swiftly to begin the confirmation process. For more on what this means for the president's relationship with the intelligence community, we're joined by Shane Harris. He covers intelligence and national security for The Washington Post. Shane, welcome back to the news hour. Uh, before we get to talking about Dan Coats and his uh, would-be replacement, can you explain a little bit more about what the actual director of natural intelligence actually does? You can sort of think of the DNI, as he's known, as kind of a chairman of the board uh, of, of this grouping of agencies, 17 intelligence agencies at all that you often, and all that you often hear called the intelligence community. And he kind of is supposed to speak publicly uh, for them. He plays a big role in crafting the budgets. But really the job of the DNI was always supposed to be to coordinate all those agencies and make sure they weren't working at cross purposes. This office was created after the 9-11 attacks and it was a recommendation of the 9-11 Commission that there be somebody sort of sitting on top of these agencies to make sure they were connecting the dots about threats, sharing information with each other in a timely manner.
So the outgoing or soon to be outgoing DNI, Dan Coats, he, as we just saw, contradicted President Trump on many issues on multiple occasions. Is that why he's out of a job? I think that's really the big reason. I mean, there was the issue of the contradiction, which the president doesn't like anyone contradicting him, uh, much less somebody uh, speaking as forcefully about world events and national security issues as Director Coates did. But I think also their personalities clash. What I've, in, in, in the time that I've been covering Director Coates, it's become clear that he is someone who uh, will speak up when he thinks that you're wrong, uh, will kind of stick to his guns, and was never really a partisan warrior for the president. He was not there to carry his water politically, uh, and he did on occasion speak his mind privately and, of course, publicly as well. So there was always friction between these two, and it was kind of a hot and cold relationship. And it's why ultimately his departure now being announced doesn't really come as a surprise to people who've been following his relationship with Trump. So the president announced that he's going to nominate Representative John Ratcliffe to take over this position. Uh, many of us saw him grill Robert Mueller very vigorously last week during those hearings. What else can you tell us about him and, and his worldview? Well, on the question of the Russia probe, he is definitely in the camp of a number of Republican lawmakers who question whether the probe was improperly begun. Uh, the probe here we're talking about, of course, is of Russian interference in the election, but also possible linkages between the Trump campaign and the Russian government, which is something that Director Mueller investigated and found there was not evidence to bring a conspiracy charge. Ratcliffe and others believe that this investigation into Trump may have had a political motivation, and therefore kind of everything that came after it is sort of a fruit of the poison tree. Uh, and he's focused a lot of his inquiry and his positions on the Judiciary Committee and the Intelligence Committee at trying to get to the bottom of things that you hear about, like the Steele dossier, these memos uh, that the FBI had from a private investigator talking about possible linkages between Trump uh, and Russia, uh, text messages that were exchanged between FBI FBI personnel that revealed a political bias against the president. So that's really where he's been coming at it. <clears throat> in terms of his time in Congress, it's been quite brief. Uh, he was briefly a U.S. attorney before he was elected to the House, and he did serve in an anti-terrorism position uh, in Texas, but not in a district that's especially known for prosecuting a lot of terrorism cases. So he doesn't come to the nomination to be DNI with a very uh, extensive resume in national security or foreign policy experience. As you say, uh, there have been a lot of Democrats who have been out criticizing him and this, this relative lack of experience. Uh, uh, Ron Wyden, who's a Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, said, Congressman Ratcliffe is the most partisan and least qualified individual ever nominated to serve as DNI. Is it unusual to have someone in that position who, who relatively speaking, doesn't have that much experience with the intelligence community? It is. It's, it's quite unusual. Everyone in this position has either had an extensive background in intelligence or in foreign policy and national security at really senior levels. Uh, so it, it, is, it is a total break from uh, history to nominate somebody uh, with as little experience in these areas as Congressman Ratcliffe. Given, as you were detailing before, Congressman Ratcliffe's criticism of the FBI in particular and how the began this Russia investigation. Is there a concern that he seems to have prejudged that there was clearly law-breaking uh, during the Obama administration in that branch of the intelligence community? Is there a concern that that's going to make his job very difficult to do if he has to now work with an agency that he has been pointing the finger at? Yeah, there is a lot of concern among intelligence officials, current and former, who I've talked to today about that very issue, that he seems to already have a view of what the intelligence community did, uh, how they behaved in coordination with the FBI. Um, and, it, and it's not a positive view. I mean, he really believes that there may have been wrongdoing. He even talked in one interview in 2018 with Fox News about the possibility of his words, a secret society within the Justice Department that was trying to stop Trump from becoming president. Um, this is a view that people in the intelligence community just reject. They always see themselves as nonpartisan, people who may have political beliefs, but they check that at the door when they come into work. So if you've got someone running the intelligence community, overseeing it, who kind of already has this preconceived notion of how conspiracies have blossomed uh, that just run totally counter to the ethic of the intelligence community, that's going to create some, some immediate friction. All right. Shane Harris of The Washington Post, thank you very, very much. You're welcome.